Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video of the Golang series. Now although this video is still a part of Golang series, but we are going to deviate a little bit from the Golang and there is a specific reason for that. We obviously now know how to make web request and handle a tiny bit of web request, but obviously the goal is to be enough ready so that we can create our own backend. In order to do so, we, knew, we need to know that how we can talk to a variety of routes and what kind of response we can receive and what to uh, expect in these responses and how to handle them. Now we don't want to create the responses from any given website or which we don't control that how the response is going to come up, how the header is going to come in. So we want to create something of our own and don't you worry, you don't have to do this along with me. I know this is specific to Golang so that's why I'm giving you some of the exercise files. In case you have taken up my other JavaScript node modern course, you will be able to f absolutely understand it. If not, that is 100% fine, you don't need to do any of that. So what you have to do for this, uh, as you'll be downloading the exercise files uh, from the GitHub repository, by the time the video will be published, all of these video, uh, exercise files or the code files will be on the GitHub or if you're watching it from the LCO Pro, this will be in the attachment. So go ahead and check it out. And this is all what we got into this one, LCO uh, web server. This is a really simplest possible web server in the uh, Node.js. So of course you need to have Node.js installed on your system. So let me go ahead and show you that. It's pretty simple. Uh, all you got to do as soon as my terminal is up and running, you just have to type node-v as long as it gives you any result back in the format of number, we are all ready and all uh, good to go for that one. Now all we have to do is uh, you can open this up into any code editor terminal, however you like to do. I would like to go ahead and fire up another instance of VS code. And what we're going to do here is we are going to just go ahead and drag and drop this LCO web server. Make sure you drag it into the new instance of VS Code, not the previous one, because this needs to run up and running onto its own instance as long as you want to get some response from it. So yes, I trust this one, of course. And uh, let me expand this a little bit so that you can see all that is happening up. Now there is not too much uh, written into this one. The exercise files and the index is pretty uh, self-explanatory. There is not too much going on. Let me show you what all uh, we can do and what to expect uh, from this server. The first thing is open up your terminal and make sure you do a ls or dir, depends on what operating system, ls for Mac and Windows and dir for Windows. Did I say Mac? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is ls. In case you are on Windows, just go ahead and do dir. Once you see on doing any of that, this package.json file, that means I'm ready to run npm install. Now, as long as you have node installed, any version of node, this should be all good and fine. And this is not too big of a file, so you can just go ahead and do that. Now, I've also configured it in the package.json so that you can just run this start command and everything will be all good for you. So all you have to say is npm start and that's it. Told you, it's really, really simple. And we can see that uh, it is saying that, hey, this is all. Uh, so there might be cases that somebody else might be listening onto your port address. In this case, uh, since we talked up here and all of these files and web servers and stuff, uh, they might be listening to on that. Uh, let me just quickly go ahead and fix that because some of the other resources on my system are using this port. Uh, but you can also always go ahead and change this port. I have given that into this variable, so you can go ahead and change this one. Uh, for example, in my case, uh, 3000 is busy, so I'm going to go for 8000. Save that and uh, kill this one and start this one again. And as you can see, it starts running absolutely fine on this port. And there are some other resources which are keeping it busy. By default, it would be 3000 for you. Feel free to change it 3000, 7000, 6000, whatever. And this is what the control that we get uh, when we have everything on our own. So we have a couple of routes here which are defined and I would like to show you that what response we get from these routes. So you can use the Thunder client for that, which is a, a VS Code extension. Or in case you are an old user of uh, Postman, you can go ahead and use Postman for that as well. It just does the exact same thing. Whatever is favorite for you, you can go ahead and do that. I would love to use uh, this one uh, extension, Thunder Client. You can go up here onto the extension and just look for Thunder and it will be available. So this is by Ranga. Make sure you give it a try. It's a nice extension, so go ahead, give it a try. Okay, once your everything is up and running and you are seeing the messages something like this, app is listening on this, 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 blah, blah port, uh, you can just go ahead and minimize this. That's all it needs to be done, okay. Now moving on to the Thunder client, uh, what we can do here is we can create new request and let's go ahead and make a request. So this request is HTTP 
colon slash slash it is on localhost colon uh, whatever the port number you have given in my case 8000 in your case it might be 3000 if you are using default so if I go ahead and make sure you also choose that what kind of request you are getting you can choose that from here first let's try the get request so we send this one and we receive a message that says uh, welcome to learn code online server that is nice if I go ahead and say slash po slash get first uh, if I send this one notice here it automatically sends me a message as a key value pair so this is a JSON response and it says hello from learncodeonline.in okay nice and easy you can go ahead and change this request to post and post expects you to actually send some post data if you go ahead and change it to post and you send it directly it's not going to work so that is the case if you go ahead it gives you just the empty response which we don't want in this case you have to send something in the body. So in the body, we are going to expect that you are going to send me some of the JSON data. So select this JSON and you go ahead and write some JSON data. For example, you go ahead and send uh, something like this name that is going to be my name. If you go ahead and send this, so whatever the data you send it, it just gets you echo that data back. But this is a post request, remember that. And right now we are doing all this operation from this extension, but we need to do all this operation from the Golang itself. That's why I'm telling you what's inside the server and what to expect from this server. If I go ahead and say that, hey, I want to go ahead and use this age parameter. So you can just send age like this and let's just say four, you go ahead and send this and it returns you back. So that's the basic of it. But there is a little bit more to this extension. Let me show you that. So this is the basic post, but there is also something which is post form so in this case it doesn't expect you if you go ahead and hit this URL post form remember in case you forget that again this is where the URLs are expected to go so if you go ahead and say post form then in this case if you go ahead and send this data uh, this is not the accurate form that you should be sending up the accurate data is actually inside the form and it should be like this so you go ahead and say um, something like uh, country maybe in this case and the country value is of course India I go ahead and send this it expects that you will be sending me this data now remember one more very interesting thing you might have already noticed this this is a form and it sends the data but if I go ahead and check the source code up here I don't just request form in this case of syntax your form form needs to be URL encoded and yes Ranga has given us that option as well so form encode common mistake everybody just sends the form data you are not supposed to send the form data like this you are actually supposed to send the form uh, data like this now if I go ahead and send this data like this uh, notice here it gives me uh, nothing as the return although there are values in the JSON but if I hit this route in the post format it just gives me nothing so I need to send some data so again country and come on India and I send this one and it echoes back all of that data so basically we need to write some of the Golang code which can handle all of these routes the slash get slash post and slash form data it will also become a great exercise for us so that we know that how we can actually talk to the backend send some get data to it any data that user pass on like search form or anything like that how we can send some of the JSON data to uh, a, an application via the Golang and also how we can send some form encoded data to our backend so it's going to be a great exercise uh, make sure you just keep this server up and running uh, this needs to be up and running if you're gonna go ahead and work on with that now we can go ahead and close this request and we can move back up here so in the next video we're going to create our file and we're going to learn that how we can send get post and post JSON and post form data in the Golang. Let's go ahead and catch up in next video.